Welcome to the June 3rd meeting of the Committee on Service, City Services for the City Council. I am Councillor Stan Moulton, uh, Chair of City Services, and will preside at this meeting, which is being audio and video recorded. Laura, would you take the roll, please? Sure. I'm Councillor Moulton. Here. Councillor Labarge. Here. Councillor Dobbs. Here. And Councillor Rothenberg. Let me make her a co-host so she can. Oh. Here. Sorry, Quay, but I give. Um, we see you there. Okay. You have a quorum. Thank you. Uh, and Councillor Rothenberg, you can hear us? Yes. Thank you. All right. First order of business tonight is a public hearing on the laying out of Old Springfield Road. I'm going to read the uh, legal notice that was published uh, pursuant to Massachusetts General Law, Chapter 82, Section 21. The City Council Committee on City Services will conduct a public hearing on Monday, June 3rd, 2024 at 5 p.m. in Council Chambers... 212 Main Street to consider laying out the following as a public way. The portion of property consisting of approximately 1,667 linear feet with a width of 33 feet duly laid out by vote of the Hampshire County Commissioners on September 7th, 1841 and shown on a plan filed in the Massachusetts Land Court in case number 35501A, sheet two of four. Proposed city layout is also shown on a plan entitled Plan of Road, Old Springfield Road over Mill River, Northampton, Massachusetts, Bridge N19068, prepared for the city of Northampton. Copies of the reference plans may be viewed at the Department of Public Works, 125 Locust Street, Northampton, during normal office hours. Any person interested or wishing to be heard regarding this application should appear at the time and place designated, which is here and now. Uh, and uh, the city clerk was also notified 15 days in advance. So we have we have completed all the legal requirements for advertising this public hearing. So uh, at this point, I would ask uh, Director of, Dep of Public Works, uh, Lascalia, to address us and explain what this means. Oh, and it turns green. Okay. All right. Hi, Hi counselors. Back again. Um, so, um, Old Springfield Road Bridge, um, MassDOT has initiated a project to replace the bridge for us. So, this is one of the bridges that the city owns. Um, we have uh, more than 30 of them in the city. Uh, many of them have significant structural deficiencies. Uh, associated with them, uh, and anytime we have the opportunity to have an improvement made to our bridges, we love to um, take that opportunity. So MassDOT has initiated uh, the design and reconstruction of this bridge as a TIP project. It's scheduled to go next summer. So part of that process uh, in order to prepare for construction is that we have to examine the roadway on which they are going to be working and make sure that all formalities associated with the acceptance of that roadway have been completed. So it is not unusual um, when we are looking at any TIP project, we ran into this with the King Street corridor, and we found that Finn Street had never been formally accepted, and North Street had never been formally accepted. So anytime the state is working on our roads or bridges, we need to make sure that we have a formal street acceptance plan um, that is uh, that has sort of dotted all the I's and crossed all the T's. So in this case, um, there was a very old, like circa mid 1800s layout by the county down in this area. And then when the county was dissolved, um, it ownership reverted uh, to the city under MGL. Audubon is the abutting landowner on both sides of Old Springfield Road. Mass Audubon had a plan of their land drawn up that was in conflict just by a little bit 
stuck with the way the county had laid out this roadway. So the county had sort of a written description of what the roadway was. And then Audubon had their land laid out uh, for a land court. And there was a slight discrepancy in the description of those two things. So in order to prepare for this project and for MassDOT to be comfortable spending public funds in this area, we have to resolve that discrepancy. So the way the discrepancy is resolved is we survey in accordance with how the plan of land is uh, recorded by Mass uh, Audubon in land court, and we make the survey align with how their land is set up and those are the plans that were part of this agenda. So we're talking about like inches here. We're, we're talking about the layout kind of just being uh, rotationally off by, you know, six or seven inches. But again, MassDOT isn't going to come in and work on a road that's like off by seven inches because then it's like well, what's these seven inches and and well, what, where is this? It, it's kind of like a legal limbo. So what we're doing is we are aligning what the land court decision or what the land court filing for Audubon says with the actual accepted city council layout of the way so that we can then present that to Mass DOT and they can move forward with the project. So that is the purpose of this entire exercise. And again, sometimes we have to do this just for, you know, five or six inches, seven inches, you know, it's just rotated a little bit oddly. So um, there is no impact to Audubon. This is sort of a paper impact. There is no cost to the city for this. Um, this is just a procedural um, item that we have to move through in order for construction to proceed. So hopefully that's a um, sufficient explanation. Yes. That Thank you. Uh, go okay, ahead, so, Councilor Berg. Thanks. So you're saying that in the 1800s, okay, I think that's what I heard you say. Yep, 1844. By the county. So that's where the discrepancy was. With Mass Audubon, theirs was completely different by six or seven or eight inches. So it could be one or two or three inches, whatever. So tell me how you're going to straighten this out with the county. So the county is out of the picture. Everything out of it. Uh, yeah, yeah, every, what I was waiting to hear. Yeah. So everything reverted to the city. So when when okay. uh, under Mass General Law, uh, ownership of these old county roads okay. goes to the city in which they exist uh, and in, in which they're constructed. <laughs> yep. Okay. And how many inches are we talking about? So it's the entire length of, of the roadway. So I think when we talk about 1,600 feet, right, 33 feet wide, and there were various points along that entire stretch that were just kind of off by a little bit. So it's the entire length okay. and the entire width, and we're just trying to reconcile it with what the written record says. Thank you. Sure. Councilors, other questions for uh, Director LaScalia? And uh, Councilor Rothenberg, I can't see you on my screen, so I'm just going to ask you to speak up if you have a question or comment. Yes, we will do. Thank, Thank you. you. No. Councilor Dubs, any, anything? Okay. Uh, so I should ask uh, if there are any other proponents here, is there anybody online besides Councillor Rothenberg? Uh, for... no. Okay, there's nobody else in the room. Uh, there are no opponents, I assume. No opponents no showing up on Zoom. Okay, so I will uh, I will say that uh, uh, Director Lascaia mentioned the Audubon Society. They have been notified about this hearing by by letter. I talked with the city solicitor this morning who said he has been in communication with the Audubon Society, mm -hmm. and they are on board with this. There's no impact on them. It's negligible, a matter of inches, uh, and uh, they have no issues. So um, 
I will also report that this went to the planning board and the planning board on May 9th voted to recommend uh, to the council that the city layout of Old Springfield Road be accepted. Uh, that vote, I believe, was uh, four in favor and one abstention. Uh, Laura, you should check that with Carolyn Mish, please. But I believe that was the case. Uh, so at this point, I will actually read the order that we will have before us at the council Thursday, and uh, then we'll we'll vote on a recommendation. So it is an order authorizing acquisition of easements for the laying out of Old Springfield Road as a public way. Uh, whereas Old Springfield Road was duly laid out a distance of approximately 1,667 linear feet with a width of 33 feet as a county way by vote of the Hampshire County Commissioners of uh, September 7th, 1841. The county layout of Old Springfield Road is shown in the plan filed in the Massachusetts Land Court Case number 35501A, sheet 204, copy of which is attached as Exhibit A. Uh, Massachusetts Department of Transportation will be replacing the Old Springfield Road Bridge over the Mill River, and Mass DOT is requiring a city layout of Old Springfield Road. Now, therefore, be it ordered, the City Council hereby authorizes the acquisition by purchase, gift, eminent domain, or otherwise of easements over that parcel of land shown as Old Springfield Road on a plan filed in the Massachusetts Land Court, case number 35501A, sheet 204, for the purpose of laying out a public way in and for the city of Northampton. No appropriation is needed for this acquisition. No betterment shall be assessed to the benefited landowners. That's the order. Um, and essentially what it means uh, is that the, the, the layout of the road is not changing. And this is, as uh, Director Lascaia said, simply procedural. So are there any further questions or discussion about the order? If not, I am looking for a uh, motion for a recommendation. I'd make a motion. Yes. Sorry. Yes. One yes. Um, let me turn that back on. Um, I do want to mention that as part of the construction process, I will likely be back here um, to take uh, either temporary or permanent easements associated with the construction of the actual bridge. Um, so I just, at that time, I just want to be clear that this is not for the construction project. It's not the easements that we need for the construction project. It is just to lay out the road. So um, just so there's no question when I come back, like, why are you back again uh, about um, the same thing? Thank you. So, okay, thank you. All right, thank you. I'll second that. Or oh, she made a motion. You, you made the motion yes, for a positive recommendation. Yes. Motion made by Councilor Labarge, seconded by Councilor Dubs. Further discussion? Uh, we need a roll call because we're not all in the room. Councilor so Moulton. roll call, please. Councillor Moulton. Yes. Councillor Labarge. Yes. Councillor Dubbs. Yes. And Councillor Rothenberg. Abstain. Okay, that is three, uh, three yes, one abstention. So that will go forward. Uh, presumably will be on Thursday's agenda with a positive recommendation. Thank you. Uh, okay, next up is public comment. Thank you, Director Lascalia. You're always welcome to stay, but uh, you're free to go. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. Is there any anybody in the room or anybody on Zoom who you could see who might be wanting to offer public comment? No. For any other things that are before us? No, no public comment. Okay. All right, so now we have a series of appointments. Oh no, we have uh, minutes of May 6th. Uh, has everybody had a chance to review those minutes? Yes, okay. Uh, motion, motion, group. motion made by Councilor Labarge for approval of the minutes. I'll second that. Seconded by Councilor Dubs. Any discussion about the minutes of May 6th? Uh, roll call please, Laura. Councillor Labarge. Yes. Councillor Dubb. Yes. Councillor Rothenberg. Yes. And Councillor Moulton. Yes. All right. Minutes of May 6th are approved unanimously. 
Okay. All right. So we're on to a series of appointments and reappointments. And first up uh, is uh, the building commissioner. Um, before we start that, I, I'm going to make a disclosure uh, about a past uh, professional relationship I have with uh, Commissioner Ross. Um, on Sunday, March 24th, I had water in the base of my home at 34 Perkins Avenue, called the fire department for assistance. In the course of their work, uh, they contacted uh, um, Commissioner Ross, uh, who responded as, a, as an inspector, uh, conducted his inspection, issued me some directives. Uh, I believe he was at my house for approximately 60 to 90 minutes. Um, and uh, during that period, there was no mention of my role as an elected official, and I believe that Commissioner Ross applied the same standards to his inspection of my property as he would have for any other resident of Northampton. I uh, consulted with the city solicitor, and in making this disclosure to acknowledge our prior professional interaction and to state my belief that there were no, there's no special treatment afforded me that disqualifies me from objectively evaluating Commissioner Ross's appointment. So that said, uh, I will introduce this by noting that Commissioner Ross uh, over, oversees the building department, which is charged with protecting the public safety, property, and land use through the administration and enforcement of the Commonwealth's building codes, plumbing and gas codes, electrical codes, architectural access regulations, and Massachusetts general laws as they apply to building safety, land use, and Northampton zoning ordinance. The, the uh, building commissioner in Northampton supervises a full-time staff of six inspectors and other personnel. So uh, the mayor is here to present Commissioner Ross. Thank you. Good evening, counselors. I am very happy to be here to speak to my appointment of Kevin Ross to the position of building commissioner for the city of Northampton. Um, this is to fill the vacancy with the retirement of former Commissioner John Flagg. Prior to coming to the city, Mr. Ross had years of experience, including his uh, with his own carpentry contracting business um, as a foreman for Wright Builders and working for other contractors. And Mr. Ross holds multiple Massachusetts licenses, including a construction supervisor's license, a hoisting license, home improvement contracting, and Massachusetts building inspector. He um, has been the building inspector here in um, Northampton since 2018, where he's he's been with the department since 2018, and um, has been part of the succession planning for the department. This is another position where preparing for a change in leadership is absolutely critical, as there is a, a recognized national building inspector shortage. We are incredibly fortunate to have such a competent and committed member of the department who is ready to step into the commissioner's position and who has a deep knowledge of how to handle projects, both with tech technical expertise and with um, a wonderful customer service ethic. Um, he's extremely dedicated. You may have noticed uh, last Thursday when we had our um, budget hearings, he was here late into the night, uh, ready, ready to take any questions that people um, may have had, and also to show support for his um, other department head colleagues. Um, Kevin has consistently um, been able to work with residents and with contractors to find workable solutions that comply with regulations and laws. Um, and he building works very closely with other departments and regulators. Um, such as the DPW planning, fire rescue, health, uh, central services. Um, actually, I was going to point out that if before we started the meeting, I witnessed a lovely interaction with Director Escalia and with Kevin, where they were sort of confabbing about um, a situation that they're working on together. Um, that I think was uh, just is bolstered by the fact that Director Escalia has stayed to support. Um, Kevin for his appointment to commissioner. So he works very closely with other department heads and um, collaborates really beautifully with them. And, and they do a lot of pretty remarkable problem solving together. Um, he's also worked closely with our longtime building commissioner uh, before John Flagg, Louis Hasbrook, who retired as commissioner at the start of the pandemic, but now works a few hours a week as the intermittent inspector for the city. Um, so we are extremely fortunate to have Kevin here in Northampton, and um, I thank the committee for your consideration of a po positive recommendation on his appointment. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, 
Uh, Commissioner Ross, anything you would like to, to say at this point about your appointment? Thank you, counselors. Um, I just wanna thank you for this opportunity to um, be in front of you to get this appointment. Uh, I love working for the city of Northampton. Um, like a mayor said, I've been here five and a half years and um, I don't like change. I like staying in one spot, uh, enjoy the people I work with. Like she said, uh, got good relationships with DPW, fire, health, uh, central services, PD. So we, we all work together to uh, help serve the city. So that's, I wanna thank you for this opportunity. Thank you. Councilors. Thank you. Uh, Council LaBarge. Yes. All right. So you have been working in the building department for seven and a half years, correct? Five and a half. Five and a half years? 2018. It's uh, since 2018. Two th no. Um, 2018. 2018. Yeah. Okay. I didn't say that on my... But anyways, I have known mostly every one of the commissioners since I've been a city councilor. To be honest with you, I've never heard your name before. <laughs> so this is new to me and I welcome you. And it's not an easy job. You know, every building inspector I have worked with, they were busy in Ward 6, believe me, the complaints have always been phenomenal and they're starting to escalate again. And basically it's people trying to run businesses in their homes and that. And I have to say, even with Tony Patillo, even though he lives on my board, he was a fantastic building inspector. Louis Hasbrook was excellent and I'm so happy he's still with the department. Yeah. So I think you're gonna be in good hands and I read your resume of what you've done from 2018 and on. Very, very, very interested in your work. So thank, thank you. you. Appreciate right. you. Thank you. Taking this position. Thank you. Uh, other counselors? Councillor Moulton? Yes. I just Go wanted ahead. to say, thank you. I just wanted to say that uh, in my capacity as representing the constituents of Ward 3, I have found Mr. Ross to be extremely responsive courteous, helpful, compassionate, and knowledgeable. I enjoy working with them, and I'm very pleased to see this appointment. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, so I had one, one question, uh, uh, Commissioner, in that. Um, can you talk a bit about your uh, decision to leave? You had worked for many years in the, in the private sector, yep. doing a lot of hands-on work construction work and so forth manage management work yep. what what prompted you to leave that uh to come work for um the municipal government um so i was getting older looking at my future uh so want to be involved with the building aspect of things and i had an interest in becoming an inspector because you're still involved with the building um and it's a consistent job you're not worried about when you're getting paid, you know, who, who, you know, the pay is, you know what you're getting when you're getting it. Um, consistency and looking out for my future. And do you, do you, uh, based on the last five and a half years here, has it been what you would hope for? Yeah, I enjoy my job. Actually, I enjoy it. Good. It's something different every day. So there, there is something different every day yep. and thing regulations change the stretch code and the specialized stretch code. Yep. And, the, and we got a new building code coming yep. out next month and fully adopted at the beginning of the year. So yes, we got a new building code coming out. So you think you made the right choice? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, great. You can tell he's got a smile on it. <laughs> <laughs> Any further questions? for either the mayor or the commissioner. Okay, then looking for a motion. Yes, I make a motion with a positive recommendation for Kevin Ross to be appointed as building commissioner to the full city council. Is there a second? Second, sure. Motion made by Councilor Labarge, seconded by Councilor Dubs for a positive recommendation on Commissioner Ross's appointment. Any 
further discussion? Uh, roll call, please. Councillor Dubbs. Yes. Councillor Rothenberg. Yes. Councillor Moulton. Yes. And Councillor Labard. Yes. Okay, so that's a unanimous positive recommendation that will go on to the council, presumably be on the agenda Thursday. And uh, thank, you. thank you. Thank you for thank you. thank you for being here tonight. Thank you for your service. Thanks. Thank you very much. Yay. I'm not going to be able to be here Thursday for the meeting. My daughter's ready. Yeah. No, okay. that's fine. Okay. All right. Perfect. Thank you very much. Bye. Thank you. Um, let me just check uh, before the mayor leaves. Uh, do any of the committee members have uh, any questions for the mayor about we have a series of reappointments? Cynthia Swapis for the Board of Health, Joe Blumenthal, Central Business Architecture, Linda Caicos, Disability Commission, Diana Foskett for Transportation and Parking, Earl Parsons, Agricultural Commission, Michael Ford, Council on Aging, Molly Hale. Urban Forestry. Any questions for the mayor about any of those reappointments? No, nope, I know them all. You know them all. Councilor Rothenberg? How many, how many applicants were there for the position that Joe Blumenthal is filling? Um, it's, I mean, since it's a reappointment, he submitted a reappointment. I'm not sure that we have had any other applicants for that position. Thank you. Anything else, Councilor Rothenberg? No, thank you. Good night, Mayor. Good night. All right, thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. -bye. Yeah, thank you. Okay, before we move on to those reappointments, I'd like to first take up the new appointments. Uh, and I will start. Uh, I uh, interviewed William McGee who lives on Prospect Street. Mm -hmm. And his appointment uh, is uh, a, th a three year term on the uh, Arts Council. Uh, so I will uh, I will give you my report. Uh, Mr. McGee has a an eclectic background and I would describe him as a problem solver. He uh, has uh, had an extensive military career he worked in the as a supply sergeant in the Army for more than eight years and then served for 32 years uh, in the Air Force Reserve at Westover Air Reserve Base in Chicopee, where he was a commissioned officer serving as uh, medical in medical logistics in charge of moving injured patients from combat areas to hospitals in Germany and the United States. Uh, he later worked for Bay State Gas. He was a commercial energy analyst. Uh, served clients throughout the state, uh, became an expert on uh, HVAC systems. Uh, in addition, about five years ago, uh, he took over responsibility of managing his family's farm in Alabama, where 450 acres of timber are harvested. And uh, in, in that capacity, he secured a USDA grant to expand that operation by planting more than 200 pine trees. Uh, He's lived in Northampton since 2010. He's got the relationship to Western Mass from having served at Westover, also has relatives in Springfield. So you might ask, as I did, why does a man with his background in the military uh, uh, and knowing heating and cooling and uh, harvesting timber, uh, why is he interested in a volunteering on the council, on the uh, Arts Council? Mm -hmm. Well, it turns out that he also describes himself as a street photographer who has a lifelong interest in photography that started years ago uh, when he was using a Kodak Brownie camera. He studied photography in Monterey, California, later at the University of Maryland. He has large metal suitcases full of his framed photographs. He's exhibited locally at both Cooley Dickinson and the YMCA. He he has he's attended uh, a couple of meetings of the Arts Council and has a particular interest in encouraging young artists as well as older people like himself who have practiced uh, at, as a hobby to publicly exhibit their work and to broaden the number of locally available venues available for smaller shows. So that is why he... Uh, has applied to serve on the Arts Council. 
questions? I have a question. Yes. How did he come to learn about the opportunity to apply, if we know? Well, uh, Council Rothenberg, he had, he's, he is the, if you looked at the application materials, he's the one who had uh, applied for a number. He had checked off a number of possibilities. He was interested in some kind of volunteer service with the city. And I think through conversations, uh, he, he and, and had, had talked with Brian Foote, and he narrowed it down. As I said, he attended a couple of meetings of the Arts Council. He finally thought that the best fit for him was on the Arts Council. So would we summarize this as sort of a self-referral to volunteering? Yes. Yes, he was seeking. Um, I mean, he's he's largely retired now. Uh, so he was seeking a volunteer opportunity on a city board or commission. Great. Thank you. All right. So uh, I would I would move a positive recommendation based on my conversation with. Uh, Second it. OK. Um, I made the motion seconded by Councilor LaBarge. Any further discussion about uh, William McGee? I would just say he sounds lovely. I love those ideas that he had. Uh, yes, I think I think if you meet him, Councillor Rothenberg, you will you will find him a lovely person with eclectic interests. Mm. All right, roll call, please, on a positive recommendation. Councillor Rothenberg, yes. Councillor Moulton, yes. Councillor Labar, yes. And Councillor Dobbs, yes. Okay, that recommendation uh, is uh, unanimous. And we'll go on to the city council, uh, presumably on Thursday. All right, next up also is a uh, an arts council appointment of Glenn Font mm -hmm. and uh, Council Labarge. Yes, um, I had a really interesting talk with Glenn Font. And I also asked him, his resume is excellent, excellent, what he's done in his life. I asked him what brought him to Northampton. He said his wife grew up in Northampton. We lived in the Boston area for many years. And when we started a family, we began to discuss moving to Northampton. One of the things I've always loved was how many music stores and bookstores there are downtown. And I knew it had a great art scene. The COVID-19 pandemic accelerated our plans and we moved to Leeds in February of 2021. He currently works for Pearson based out of Hadley on teacher certification test. I also asked him, what did he know about the Arts Council? He is saying that my understanding is that the Arts Council plays a vital role in supporting the arts community by allocating grant money for projects, performances, and public art. The council runs the annual performance show at the Pines Theater, as well as the Bobo Bash and other fundraisers. And I did ask him what interested him in applying for the appointment to the Arts Council. And Glenn stated that I see all of the great work the council is doing and want to help in those efforts. I am also still new to the area, so I welcome the opportunity to meet other artists, musicians, and event organizers. He was really excited about the Arts Council. Then I asked him, is there a particular issue that you are interested in working on? And Glenn has stated, I want to do what I can do to address the lack of live music venues and rehearsal slash studio space for artists. I also want to help connect the local artists with local audiences. To me, that means finding new ways to connect with the community at large so they know about all the amazing things that are happening here in Northampton. 
And looking at his resume, you can see his background. And I did ask him about his background. He graduated from Berkeley College of Music in 2005 with a bachelor's in music business. After that, Glenn spent much of his 20s touring with bands like Bang Camaro and Earl Greyhound. And then in 2011, he earned his master degrees in education and spent many, many high school social studies until the pandemic. Now he works remotely for the educational publishing company, Pearson. He has two young children, Harley 10 and Jamie 7, and a mini golden doodle named Chewy. I also asked him, what work or life experience do you have that is relevant to this role? He feels that his experience as a teacher strengthened my organizing and logistic skills which I have used to promote events, from planning to execution. I enjoy all aspects of working with other people to make events happen. Additionally, my experience as a teacher will aid in reading and evaluating the many grant proposals that come before the Arts Council. It was very interesting talking with him. Very excited to be on this committee. I would like to make a motion with a positive recommendation for Glenn Font to be appointed to the Arts Commission. I'll second that. Motion made by Councillor Bard, seconded by Councillor Dubbs for a positive recommendation on Glenn Font for the Arts Council. Any discussion? Councillor Dubbs, I am just curious, do you happen to know this fellow since you also work in sort of rock and roll space? Um, to be honest, I don't, I don't, I don't know if I've met them personally, but I know that we are friends on Facebook, mm -hmm. so I can confirm that I am at least they're, they're part of my world in some way, definitely. But I haven't. You, would you be willing to reveal your cards as to whether you're leaning towards a positive recommendation? I would say I am leaning towards a positive recommendation. Yes. I, I sort of am deferring to you because of your more expertise in the area. Thank you. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Any further discussion? Roll call, please. Yeah. Councillor Moulton. Yes. Councillor Labarge. Yes. Councillor Dubbs. Yes. Councillor Rothen. Yes. Okay, that uh, motion uh, is unanimous for a positive recommendation. And we'll also go to the City Council, presumably on Thursday. Um, next up is Melissa Curtin, uh, Conservation Commission. Also interviewed by uh, Councillor Labarge. I'm trying to find you. How come I don't have to stand? Okay. I had a, a lengthy talk with Melissa Curtin. She's just excellent, excellent. Has a lot of energy, and her and I talked about the North Denton Conservation Commission lengthly. And I did ask her, what brought you to Northampton? She attended the UMass as a plant and soil science major and then lived in Northampton in 1978 while working in a limited term position in horticultural therapy at the VA. Over the years, my partner Michael and I have returned to the area many times to visit lifelong friends and family nearby. While our work in academia has taken us to many fine communities, we have long thought that Northampton was at the top of our list as a place to retire. We love the valley and surrounding hills and mountains for their beauty, natural resources, and community support agriculture. We also greatly appreciate the vibrant art and music scene, community members' keen interest and environmental concerns, and the many opportunities to continue in lifelong learning. 
we are both very happy with our decisions to make Northampton our home. And then I asked her, I said, Mary, what do you actually know about the Conservation Commission? <laughs> she said, I have been familiarizing myself with the, con with the commission by reviewing information on the city webpage and the accompanying documents posted. I have also been sitting in on meetings since February 22nd to understand the commission's procedures and various issues that it addresses. And she has also started looking through information on the Massachusetts Association of Conservation Commission, MACC website. She also told me that she has also looked over a couple of local easements to become familiar with this type of document. She understands that the commission administers both the Massachusetts Wetlands Protection Act and the Northampton Wetlands Ordinance to ensure that any proposed project will not have a negative impact on wetlands or on water quality, the groundwater table, or flooding. It also encourages projects which improve already degraded areas. <clears throat> The commission is also charged with open space acquisition and management. Additionally, members of the Conservation Commission strive to stay updated on advances in the field of environmental protection, including efforts of other conservation commissions in the region. <laughs> I do realize, however, that there is much more for me to learn, and I look forward to doing so. For this reason, I joined MACC, <coughs> excuse me, and will start taking its virtual training modular soon. And I asked Mary, what interested her in applying for the appointment to Conservation Commission? She said, when moving here, my partner and I immediately started enjoying walking in our conservation and open space areas as well as learning more about the natural history and local ecology of the area. Clearly, these are precious areas for our community and the local regional system. And I then met two people who have served on other conservation commissions in Massachusetts and in NH. And Mary realized that serving on our local commission would be a fulfilling opportunity. As a volunteer at Look Park, I am part of an enthusiastic group that is installing a pollinator garden and metal area and combating invasives, but I've wanted to do more. I've long had a passion for protecting the environment, but with our climate crisis, I believe it's urgent to do as much as possible to protect our natural resources. I've also been deeply impressed by the conjugal and respectful communication during commission meetings when discussing complex and often challenging issues. Their example has inspired me to learn more about these issues. And when this vacancy opened up, I was immediately enthusiastic about the possibility of joining the commission. She just was such a pleasure of talking to Mary. Then I asked her, is there a particular issue you are interested in working on? Mary stated, this is a challenging question to answer because there are so many important issues. I am particularly interested in stormwater management, especially green infrastructure and buffer zones, including issues about water quality and groundwater supply. I am also studying up on the MP, M, I'm sorry, BMPs for mitigating different evasives and am enjoying learning more about native plants and pollinators. I especially look forward to learning more about wetlands and strategies for protecting and restoring these crucial elements of our environment and reviewing the documents linked on the Northampton Conservation Commission, as well as the commission training modules for the MACC 
Fundamental for Conserv Conservation Commission certificate. I find that I have a keen interest in all of the topics. In fact, this is a strong reason for my interest in serving on the commission. And if you look at her background, it's really amazing. She grew up in a small town in Vermont on the Connecticut River and spent a great deal of time outdoors in Vermont, New Hampshire, Maine, and New York, hiking and camping, fishing, canoeing, swimming, skiing, and working, clearing brush, mowing, raking, weeding, collecting, maple syrup, shoveling snow. She attended high school in Pittsfield, followed by her studies at UMass. She has long loved the Connecticut River Valley and have traveled along the river between Northampton and Bradford, Vermont for over 50 years now. In fact, about 20 years ago, I was buying a breakfast bagel in Amherst and the young person working the counter jovially asked me what I would want to do if I had all the money in the world. Having just driven down from Bradford, I immediately replied, I would use all my money to try to protect the Connecticut River and all of its watershed. When we moved back to the area a couple of years ago, she felt as thought I had come home, but I was also prompt to reflect deeply about both the continuity and change of the area, including the natural environments. The area is still beautiful, yet there is much to be done to mitigate effects of our climate crisis. Motivated by my lifelong love of the New England outdoors and long held concern for the environment, it would be a privilege to serve on the Conservation Commission as stewards of the land. I believe we have a shared responsibility to the floor and fauna as well as to the younger generations of fellow humans. I make a motion with a positive recommendation for Mary Curtin to be appointed on the Conservation Commission. Second. Okay, thank you, Council LaBarge. I feel like I've just read her bi biography. Um, thank you. Um, I talked for a good hour and a half. Well, that's that's a that's a very positive sign. Um, now you refer to her as Mary. She goes is she, her name is Melissa, and she goes by Mary. Okay. So yep. we're we're got a positive Melissa Curtin is a room. Yes, yes. Positive recommendation. Um a motion made by Council Labarge, seconded by Councillor Rothenberg on uh, Melissa Curtin. Any discussion? I just wanted to note that it, it sounds like this is the wife of Michael Curtin, who we recently uh added to historical commission. And I just I just want to say, wow, what a great addition to our community. It sounds like both of them are. And they both were like real experts in these areas that they applied to. So I just feel very fortunate, especially with the climate and the stormwater interest she has. I mean, that's so, so helpful. And thanks for the great report, Councillor Labarge. Thank you. Uh, any further discussion? Okay, roll call, please. Councillor Labarge. Yeah. Councillor Dubbs. Yes. Councillor Rothenberg. Yes. And Councillor Moulton. Yes. Uh, that is unanimous positive recommendation for Melissa Curtin for the Conservation Commission, which also will go to the City Council, presumably on Thursday. Next though, is uh, Sydney Mininger, Mininger uh, Disability Commission and Councillor Dubs. Thank you. Yes, um, Sydney Mininger. Um, I had a wonderful zoom session with her last week um she will be um the one of the youngest members to our disability commission that we've had and i think that's going to be a really great perspective to have on the commission um so i asked her a few questions um so first of all like what brought her to northampton and uh so she, when she finished school her family moved to northampton um and then um so she said that a friend had told her about the Disability Commission and that she, they thought she would be a good fit. Um, having a more invisible type of a disability rather than a visible disability, um, I think that she will have a very unique and much needed perspective 
on the Disability Commission, um, which is something that we were, were it definitely needed on our commission. Um, um, when I talked to her about the, uh, what the, per I asked about um, what she knows about the Disability Commission, and I asked what, in her opinion, what is the purpose of the Disability Commission, and she said that it's the purpose is to help the city become more inclusive. Um, and in terms of the role that she'd like to play, um, she would like to help the city to, to develop programs or policies that impact disabled the disabled community in a, in a positive way. Um, when I asked her about a particular issue that she might be interested in working on on the Disability Commission, she um, stated uh, that she believes that sidewalks in Northampton should be more wide, and she'd like to to work with the city to see how she could uh, how we could widen the sidewalks uh, over time. Um, and she had a really interest has a really interesting background and a life experience that would um, make her role very relevant very relevant on the disability commission. She um, she has never been in government before, but she has had committee experience on a council called um, the Youth Activation Council with Special Olympics, which she served on from 2018 to 2020. And um, the purpose of that was to make sports more inclusive for all at schools. And um, her role that she played in that was she helped to um, she helped to talk to other schools as well to to gather um, people from different schools together to to work on what they called unified sports and to make it more like a community, very community based effort where it wasn't just, you know, one school, but also uh, many schools would come together to uh, make their sports more inclusive for all. And um, so I think that would be just incredible experience to bring to the Disability Commission. Um, yeah, and um, so that's about it. I, um, I believe that as the young, as one of the younger members, her youthful energy would be would be an excellent addition. Um, her goals align with the goals of the Disability Commission. Uh, and one one other question I asked her was, uh, um, I, I asked her if she believed that would, uh, if she believed any improvements could be made to make Northampton more accessible, and she thinks that um, she thinks that more accessible entrances to buildings would be great in Northampton. And uh, it's, I would definitely agree with her on that. I would think that uh, I would think that other members of the Disability Commission would also agree with that. So I think that, um, yeah, I think that she'll, she'll be amazing. And also this would be the first time in a while that the Disability Commission has had a full commission. So I think we're all very excited about it. Thanks. And so I would like to make a motion for a positive recommendation. Second. Okay, thank you, Councilor Dubbs. Uh, Motion made by Councilor Dubbs, seconded by Councilor Labarge for a positive recommendation on uh, Sydney uh, Mininger. Yes. For the Disability Commission. Any discussion? If not, roll call, Laura, please. Councilor Dubbs. Yes. Councilor Rothenberg. Yes. Councilor Moulton. Yes. And Councilor Labarge. Yes. That is a unanimous positive recommendation. Uh, also on to the city council, presumably on Thursday. And then finally, uh, we have Richard Baker, who is a candidate for appointment as an associate member of the planning board. And that is Councilor Rothenberg. Yes, thank you. So I think here again, we are really lucky that we have some folks fairly new to the community who are bringing expertise that is really on target with the applications that they're making. I uh, was so fortunate that they want to volunteer. Here we have a retiree from Minnesota. And as you can see from uh, his really actually succinct um, application, he's really well suited for this. He is a conservation biologist and he also is a longtime member of the planning board in Minnesota. Um, he also spent 20 years helping the state uh, with coordinating uh, endangered species programs where they needed to do permitting. And so he's really been in the trenches in complex situations with developers and governments uh, and neighbors and all while maintaining his really uh, principled and strong understanding about nature. So I find him to be very well suited for the complexities of the planning board. 
uh, he noted that he first got to know the Broadbrook Coalition Board here, and he spent two years there and was very impressed with the work of Lori Sanders and a report she had written uh, about Fitzgerald, I think. And he started an environmental commission in Minnesota. And he did say that he is really working hard to sort of observe our government and understand how we function in the sense that his government was a weak mayor versus strong mayor system. So he's attuned to that. There'll be a bit of a learning curve for him. So he's been attending planning board meetings. Uh, he'll be at the upcoming meeting on the 13th of June. And I asked him, uh, since that involves a Ward 3 issue, if he might be interested in being introduced to the developer or some of the abutters. And uh, he said he would just follow along at the meeting. And I mentioned to him that they have been having some issues at the planning board with um, public participation, I think some technology issues. And so I just uh, asked him if, if that was the case and the public felt like they wanted to add even more detail than he'd he'd be able to access through that public hearing format uh, if he might be interested in meeting with the public and he was he was quite interested in that if that turns out to be the case so i think that he's going to be very responsive to the public i think that he's going to be very considerate of um, developers and officials and really find that sort of sweet spot while as i said really really centering also uh, the expertise he has. I think that expertise is so important because he is going to be able to really let us know when there might be something that we're overlooking. He strikes me as someone who's um, confident and comfortable and courteous enough to be able to to advocate for for any concept that he thinks is is really essential, um, but also you know be able to leave room for for the work to go on as it as it needs to. Uh, I did get a few sample questions from some of my constituents to ask him about sort of responsible, comprehensive municipal stormwater management and infrastructure upgrades in the context of climate change and new housing infill development and public health and safety. And one example that we talked about was whether it was sustainable to sort of uh, have a slab foundation rather than a full basement. Um, and while I cannot repeat with the same level of expertise what his take on it was, uh, his general take was it was actually something he would be learning more about. And he really looks at things on a case by case basis. And it really depends a lot on the particular context of the particular plot. So I found that to be a very credible answer. And I think he'll be a great addition. I really enjoyed meeting with him. I think he'll do a good job keeping us as counselors informed um, of things, at least the way that he sees it. I think he'll be able to, to really teach us when he thinks there's something we need to learn. I liked him very much. And uh, I just wanted to say in closing that part of the reason he chose Northampton is because of the train accessibility to New York City. He has a family ties there and he was just thrilled that it is so easy to get there. So it does seem like we're getting more and more New York folks our New York interested folks here. And that seems like it's really been to our benefit in terms of the training and experience that people are bringing to us. Would you like to make a motion? Of course, positive recommendation. Seconder. Okay, thank you, Councilor Rothenberg. Um, motion by Councilor Rothenberg, seconded by Councilor Labarge for a positive recommendation on Richard Baker as a, an associate member of the planning board. Further discussion? Yeah. Roll call, please, Laura. Councillor Rothenberg. Yes. Councillor Moulton. Yes. Councillor Labarge. Yes. And Councillor Dubb. Yes. Okay, unanimous positive recommendation for Richard Baker, uh, also on to the city council, presumably on Thursday. All right, thanks. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, colleagues on city services for those very comprehensive reports. Uh, and I think that uh, not only do we get a great window into the uh, the candidates who we're sending on to serve on boards and commissions, but I think for them, it's a great opportunity to meet with one of us and get a, you know, get a sense of who, who 
we are and who they're going to be working with in municipal government. So I appreciate all the time that all of you put into those um, conversations. All right, we are now on to uh, two sets of reappointments that were uh, referred to us May 2nd and May 16th. Uh, first up is uh, Cynthia Swapis, Board of Health. Uh, she has been on the Board of Health for more than a decade. She's currently vice chair. She is a retired uh, professor of health at the University of Massachusetts, specializing in health communication. She has served in a number of other municipal positions, uh, including uh, vice chair of the Northampton Police Review Committee. And uh, and she also has held positions on the uh, on uh, Mass General Brigham uh, uh, Cooley Dickinson. Uh, she's a, currently a member of the uh, Board of Trustees. She's also done work on the subcommittee to study pesticides on city property, and served as well on this the recent city council subcommittee to study barriers to service on city boards and committees. So she brings not only a, 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 an extensive background in health, but also uh, a very broad background in uh, community service, both in municipal government and, uh, and, and with Cooley Dickinson. Uh, so I'm seeking a motion. Motion for a positive recommendation, Cynthia. All right, motion uh, by Councilor Dubb, seconded by Councilor Labarge for a positive recommendation for uh, Cynthia Swopis' uh, reappointment to the Board of Health. Any further discussion? Roll call, Laura. Councilor Moulton. Yes. Councilor Labarge. Yes. Councilor Dubbs. Yes. And Councilor Robinberg. Yes. That is the unanimous positive recommendation on to the city council, presumably on Thursday. Uh, next up is Joe Blumenthal, who is uh, up for reappointment to the Central Business Architecture Committee. Um, uh, Joe Blumenthal, longtime downtown business owner with appreciation for the, uh, the city's architecture. He has uh, been the, the Chamber of Commerce's representative uh, for at least two decades on, on CBAC and actually served on the committee that resulted in establishing this, this committee. Um, his interests are particularly in preserving the mix of downtown architecture. And currently, uh, he is most interested in working uh, as a member of CBAC in helping to shape the redevelopment of 33 King Street, the old registry building, which falls within the the uh, central business area that this that CBAC has purview over. So, seeking a recommendation for Joe Blumenthal. Yeah. <clears throat> I'll make a positive recommendation. For Joe Blumenthal, to the Central Business Architectural Committee to the full city council. Is there a second? Well, I'll second it. Okay, any further discussion? Um, yes, I'd just like to make an uh, observation. Um, I, I recently attended uh, one of the more recent Central Business Architecture Committee meetings. Mm -hmm. And the reason was because at this meeting, they were uh, discussing a wheelchair lift that was being added to 41 Strong Avenue in Northampton. Um, and so this, this, uh, this particular wheelchair lift that was being added to the building needed to go through approval of the Central Business, Central Business Architecture in order for the, the lift to be built. Um, I personally, was not impressed by Joe Blumenthal's comments that he made at the meeting. Uh, he referred to the wheelchair lift as ugly and unattractive. He also pushed the rest of the, he also pushed for the rest of the committee to not vote to put a window on the lift because he thought that if people see it see into the lift, 
to see the people using the lift, that would be unattractive. I found that really offensive. I told him that at the meeting, and I do not recommend him to be on the committee to be appointed. Thank you. All right, so just, just so I understand, Councillor Dubs, this was a a wheelchair lift on a on a private building on, on Strong Avenue. Uh, there's three businesses uh, on the uh, the building that has the honey dispensary, um, Bishop's Lounge, and and uh, Molino's, and they were ordered by the Massachusetts Architectural Access Board to become accessible. Mm -hmm. And uh, I testified at the hearing that uh, led to that order. And um, I was just, you know, I was appalled when I heard him saying that uh, a wheelchair lift that would benefit our community, members of our community, allow them access to businesses. And he called that ugly and unattractive. He shouldn't be on that board. I have a question for Councillor Dubs. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. And what did he say? Uh, he said that he, he said there's no way there's no getting around it. No matter what we do, the wheelchair lift is going to be ugly and unattractive. And he also gave the opinion that it shouldn't have a window on it because people would see through the window and that's not attractive. And you know you need a window on a wheelchair lift because you need to see outside. You don't want to be in complete darkness while you're riding a wheelchair lift. You could have preferred that. Now. Councilor Moulton, the mayor with the reappointments, that application, they are called if they want to be still be reappointed. So did the mayor say anything about, did you talk with the mayor about this? I didn't speak with the mayor. No, I just attended the meeting because I was, I was there to give my support for the wheelchair lift. And I was floored by what he said. I'm, I'm, Councilor Rosenberg. Yeah. I'm very sorry to hear that, Councilor Dubs. I understand why that would be offensive. I think it makes me think that um, it would be a good idea to be thoughtful about this appointment because that seems like uh, something that could arise again in the future. And I wonder if this is sort of uh, an example of times, like changing times and more um, sensitivity and understanding about some of the issues that are sort of newer for a board like this to, to be more thoughtful about. And so I think that I would actually be in favor of keeping this position open and actually thinking ab about whether we wanna have some representation for disabled people on this committee. That sounds like that could be something that's really important. So I would lean towards not uh, reappointing and actually instead thinking about if we could cast this net out to um, to have a, a more representative board. I think you should be notified, Stan. And, and I would just add that I, I do I do know Mr. Blumenthal and in fact play music with him and, and find him to be a pleasant, wonderful neighbor. I think that that just makes me even more convinced that representation is really important because no matter how kind we all are, we, we really can't always put ourselves in the shoes of, um, for example, a disabled person. Uh, we have a motion. Uh for a positive recommendation. Do you want to withdraw that motion, Councillor? Yeah. It's been withdrawn, I'll withdraw my second. Is there a, um, is there a replacement motion? Yes, a motion for a negative recommendation. Make a what? Uh, she, uh, Councillor Rothenberg has moved a negative recommendation. Unless, is there, is there a better way, is there a more tactful sort of motion to actually express what I was trying to express? Which uh, was that turn to the mayor for uh, reconsideration of considering a, a person with a disability? Uh, 
Well, the options are uh, a negative recommendation, uh, which simply uh, indicates that we don't feel he should continue on the CB CBAC, uh, or a neutral recommendation, which would, I think, open up the discussion for uh, perhaps what you're suggesting that uh, a, a wider group of candidates be mm -hmm. considered. Right, and I think the mayor should also know what Councillor Dubbs has presented here at this meeting and why this decision is being made. Is another option to carry this over to another meeting? Yes, we could do that, I think. I'm pretty sure. Well, I, I think that I, I'm not sure what, what continuing this for another month would accomplish. I think an, a neutral recommendation presumably then would be discussed on the floor of the council about the reservations. Yeah. Well, I, mean, I was just thinking if we're sort of the working group on this and we're thinking that we wanted the mayor to be able to discuss this with us, this might be the right place to keep it. And the only thing is it'll be constructively approved for to about 45 days after it's, um, I don't think if it's 45 days after the fall or 45 days after filed with the city clerk and council, and it might be the latter. So it was referred May 2nd. I know the 45 yes. days will be coming. All right, so uh, the clerk, uh, 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 Laura is pointing out, uh, Council um, Rothenberg, that if if we delay it until for the next meeting, which right now is scheduled for July one, the appointment will uh, by uh, default will go into effect because it will be forty five days beyond the uh, referral of May second. Thank you. Councilor. Dubs, I would be interested to hear Councillor Dubs' thoughts if he has any. Um, I'm I'm just holding off until you hearing what you guys think is the best thing to do. Yeah, just whatever you guys think is best. I'll agree with that. Uh, in my opinion, a neutral recommendation with uh, then an explanation to the mayor why this is going forward with a neutral recommendation is the best course of action. I, I'm, I I'm okay with that. What do you think, Waverly? Yes, I would make a motion for a neutral recommendation. Is there a second? I'll, I'll second that. Okay, so the positive recommendation motion was withdrawn and the second. Now we have a motion by Councillor Rothenberg, uh, seconded by Councillor Dubs for a neutral recommendation. Any further discussion? Okay, uh, roll call on a neutral recommendation, please. Councillor Labarge. Yes. Councillor Dubbs. Yes. Councillor Rothenberg. Yes. And Councillor Moulton. Yes. All right, so that neutral recommendation is unanimously uh, approved. Uh, we'll go on to the council, uh, presumably Thursday. I will I will notify the mayor uh, why this is going forward yes. with a neutral recommendation. All right. Well, I, I um, Council Dubs, I appreciate your um, bringing this to our attention. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm happy to bring it to your attention. Okay. On to uh, all right. On to uh, Linda Kakos, who is uh, uh, up for reappointment to visit. The Disability Commission. She has served three three terms, so she's been on the Disability Commission for nearly a decade. Uh, I think that either Councillor Large or Councillor Dubs, who have served with her, can speak to her work on disability. Oh yes, yeah, Linda's wonderful. Yeah, she's. I have worked with Linda for quite a long time, quite a long time. Very caring, and has a due respect for people with disabilities. She's excellent. And I would highly recommend her for that reappointment to the Commission on Disabilities. Yeah, I would agree with Councilor Barge. Um, um, she, um, Linda Kekos is always read, ready to 
tackle an issue with the disability commission whenever it's whenever someone is needed for a subcommittee to join a subcommittee to you know work on an issue she's always ready to volunteer to help out and so i would definitely give her a positive recommendation that's uh, important. i have a question for you with the, with the reappointments yes you have talked with the mayor about yes. the reappointments I've talked with the mayor and I've talked with the candidates. Yeah. And there was never a problem, right? No. One. No. Uh, all right. So was that a motion, Councilor Dubs? Yeah, yeah. I'll, make, I'll definitely make a motion. For... We have a motion, Councilor Dubs, and seconded by Councilor Council Labarge for a positive recommendation on Linda Kakos to the Disability Commission. Uh, any further discussion? Roll call, Laura. Councillor Dubs. Yes. Councillor Rothenberg. Yes. Councillor Moulton. Yes. And Councillor Labarge. Yes. Okay. That is unanimously approved onto the City Council, presumably Thursday. Okay. Now we have uh, Diana Foskett, who is a member of the Transportation and Parking Commission. She has uh, served uh, for one term. She's just completed her first term, three years. She is an attorney with experience in road engineering and maintenance issues and um, also has experience as an assistant city attorney elsewhere. So she's knowledgeable about municipal law and she she wants to continue to serve on this uh on this committee because of its uh, work with, with particularly with the roads um, and safety in, in Northampton. So seeking a motion. Make a motion to um, positive recommendation for Diana Foskey. Second it. Motion made by Councillor Dubs, seconded by Councillor Labarge for a positive recommendation on Diana Foskett to transportation and parking. Any discussion? Just wanted to let you all know I will be abstaining because I did not get to do as much due diligence as I like, although her experience sounds fascinating. Okay. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, roll call, Laura. Councillor Rothenberg. Abstain. Um, Councillor Moulton. Yes. Councillor Labard. Yes. And Councillor Dobbs. Yes. Okay, that passes with three yes, one abstention. Uh, positive recommendation on to the City Council, presumably on Thursday. And now we're on to the May 16th group. Uh, Agricultural Commission, Earl Parsons, who goes by Chip, uh, lives in Hadley, uh, but has... His family has farmed uh, both in Hadley and Northampton, uh, particularly in the meadows in Northampton. Uh, he, he is the 12th generation of his family, uh, which has farmed that land. He is the only non-resident of Northampton to serve on the Agricultural, on the agricultural Commission. Uh, he is a member because of his farming in the meadows and the Agricultural Commission's efforts to have a diverse group of farmers, both in terms of the geography and crops and so forth, different experiences. Uh, Chip Parsons um, has served on the Agricultural Commission since its beginning about uh, a decade or so ago. In addition to his extensive uh, family experience with farming, and, and I can say I think that they are one of the most respected farm families in uh, this area, uh, he's long been involved with the Three County Fair Association, serving as director and twice as president. So I am seeking a motion. Yes, I'd like to make a motion with a positive recommendation for Earl Parsons um, to be appointed on the Agricultural Commission to the full city council. I'll second that. Oh, sorry. Okay. Uh, motion made by Council Labar, seconded by Council Rothenberg on Earl Chip Parsons' reappointment to the Agricultural Commission. Any 
discussion. Uh, roll caller. Councillor Moulton. Yes. Councillor Labarge. Yes. Councillor Dubbs. Yes. Councillor Rothenberg. Yes. Okay, that uh, motion is approved unanimously on the City Council, presumably on Thursday. Next up, Michael Ford, Council on Aging. Uh, Michael has uh, served uh, uh, six years, two terms on the Council on Aging. Um, he's a retired professor and administrator at Hampshire College. <clears throat> um, and this year he joined uh, the board at the Lathrop community um, uh, to increase his connection to seniors in Northampton so that he can better represent their needs and interests uh, on the Council on Aging and at the Senior Center. I make a positive recommendation for Michael Ford to be appointed on the Council on Aging to the full City Council. I'll second that. Okay, motion made by Council Labard, seconded by Councilor Dubbs for a positive recommendation on Michael Ford to the Council on Aging. Any discussion? Roll call, Laura, please. Councilor Labarge. Yes. Councilor Dobbs. Yes. Councilor Rothenberg. Oh, sorry. Yes. Okay. And Councilor Moulton. Yes. That is approved unanimously. Uh, positive recommendation onto the full city council, presumably on Thursday. And then finally, we have Molly Hale. Uh, a reappointment to the Urban Forestry Commission. Uh, Molly has served two terms, uh, about six years. Mm -hmm. She is a retired forest ecologist with particular knowledge of local trees and ecological management. Uh, and she has a particular interest uh, in promoting the new uh, setback tree planting program uh, in Northampton, which involves approaching residents uh, who are willing to have um, uh, a tree planted on their property uh, that's that's uh, uh, that's within about twelve feet of the the setback from the uh, from the uh, from the road. Uh, so. So, Look, looking for a rec uh, motion on Molly Hale. Yes, I make a uh, positive recommendation um, for Molly Hale to be appointed on the Urban Forestry Commission to the full city council. Second that. Okay. Motion made by Councilor Labar, seconded by Councilor Dubbs. Uh, for a positive recommendation on Molly Hale to the Urban Forestry Commission, any further discussion? Just that I'll be abstaining for the same reason as parking, but again, great, great background. Okay, thank you, Councillor. Um, roll call, Laura. Councillor Dubbs. Yes. Councillor Rothenberg. Abstain. Abstain. Councillor Moulton. Yes. And Councillor Lavarge. Yes. Okay, that passes um, three with three uh, positive votes. And one abstention uh, onto the city council, uh, presumably on Thursday. Um, all right, that is that brings us to the end of all of these uh, a dozen appointments, reappointments, and uh, I will just make the editorial comment. Um, as several of the councilors here have pointed out, we are very fortunate to have volunteers with the expertise that all of these people bring to their positions on city boards and commissions and enrich the work of of these uh, to uh, to assist the city in many, many, many different roles. Uh, it's incredible, really, that we can attract all of this talent. So thank you. Thank you for your attention. And uh, we are now up to date uh, with all of the appointments that have been referred to city services. We'll see if we get any more on, on Thursday. Um, our next meeting uh, is scheduled for uh, July 1st. Uh, and uh, I, I 
don't think there'll be any reason for us to have a special meeting later in later in June. Um, but we'll see what we get uh, this this coming Thursday at the council. So unless there is uh, any yes. new business, Council Labarge. Yes, and we need to look for the month of September. And I mentioned that to you on the phone. Yes, you did. The holiday. Yes, you Labor did. Day, we need to change that. So it's good to know this ahead of time so we can decide on a date. Okay. Uh, as Council Labarge points out, our regular meeting time of the first Monday in September, September 2nd, will be uh, Labor Day. So we will not be meeting then. Um, I mean, um, uh, we will have had... Maybe Tuesday? We will have had a meeting in August. So our August meeting may have referrals. So we may, we may want to meet... Uh, Right. If we met Tuesday the third before the the first September meeting, we could take care of those August referrals if there are any. If there aren't any, we might just skip that September meeting. September meeting. Yeah. Okay. My question or, is yeah. July, the month of July and yes. the month of August. Yes. Okay. Usually we'll play it by ear because counselors might be going away on vacation. Either one of those months. And I look at this very serious here of nonstop, nonstop meetings and having a break in between. Mm -hmm. If we see that the schedule does not look bad for July, well, then we should be able to have the opportunity to have that month off for city service. Vice versa for the month of August. If July is busy, then we'll look at August. Yes, I have in favor of a break in July if it's possible. Yeah, I, I'm so, sorry, Councilor Rothberg. Can you repeat that? I didn't hear. Her. I'm all in favor of a break in July if it is possible. Oh, you're in favor of a break in July. Okay, so I suspect. Uh, let me ask Laura. Have we gotten any referrals of of appointments yet for the uh, for this Thursday's meeting? Okay. Come at the last. Meeting. Okay, so I suspect that. Um, that will it's likely since appointments run till the end of the fiscal year i suspect that it's likely that we may get some this month it's either at the, uh, the meeting on the 6th or the 20th uh that might require us to deal with them on july 1st that's you know i i we don't know yet uh if we so at that at this point, um, that's our next scheduled meeting, and we we're not going to know until the the meeting of the twentieth whether there's any business for right. us. So it, yeah, if there's nothing referred to us. Um, we won't meet on July first. Okay. Then no matter what, if somebody's got to go on vacation for the month of July or August, there's we have four on this committee. So three would be fine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I could I could just say now. Um, I actually will be going on a trip to LA, but I'll I'll be back on July first. Mm -hmm. I think I can make that meeting, but it might make it a little tricky. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> hey, you deserve a vacation. Thank you. You too. Well, we'll we'll decide once we see what um, what we get, uh, either this Thursday or the twentieth. Um, Plus the fact, Corbily, her children are out of school and so forth. Yeah. And as, you know, mother and a husband and the children, people go on vacations. Um, we have one meeting in July, which is the 18th. Is that correct, Laura? In July, no. Oh, it's before the 15th. So it's we, the 11th? It's the 11th. Okay. All right, so we have uh, one meeting in July, so uh, and one in August. Yes, and one in August. So if we if we get referrals uh, in June, um, we could we could, we'll we'll need to take take them up before that July eleventh council full council meeting. But there's some leeway there. Um, I mean, we, we wouldn't necessarily have to be the first if you're traveling back 
Councillor Dubs from LA, we could we could arrange a different date. Oh, that'd be great. Yeah. Okay. Even the next day. Would be great. Yeah, and I I think Councillor Barge, you're you're the expert on this, but we probably don't get too many referrals during the summer, right? So we may we may not need to need to meet in August at all. And city service, we very seldom ever had a meeting, either in July or August. Counselors deserve a break. Yes, I, I I concur, and we won't call any unnecessary meetings. Exactly. Okay. Any other new business? I was just, I have a question, Counselor Moulton, procedurally. Yes. If there is ever a commission that is feeling like they're having trouble uh getting their voice heard much in the same way that sometimes the public feels they're having trouble getting their voice heard. Are we an appropriate venue for them to come and have a meeting with us? Uh, the, um, our charge is to, uh, is to oversee uh, the activities and operation of municipal government. Mm -hmm. So yes, that's a rather broad charge. Okay. Thank you. And, and I mean, it works both ways. I mean, we can invite, uh, 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 you know, a municipal uh, department or board or to to come address us, or if they if they feel a need to express themselves, this would be an appropriate venue, I think. Mm -hmm. Okay, and so those requests should just be made to you as chair. Uh I'm not sure they should go directly to me. I think I think we might need to involve the full council uh to refer to us i I, I think i think that um probably a request should go to the council president so that he can decide how to handle how to handle its referral now which departments is what we're talking about uh, do you have a specific uh board or department in mind i do but i don't want to get ahead of them if they have a way that they're still working on advocating for their issue I just wanted to know if this was an option for them. So thank you. This could be an option, yes. Mm -hmm. Any other business before us? Uh, and if not, then I will entertain a motion to adjourn. We'll change our... Second that. Uh, motion made by Councilor Labarge, seconded by Councilor Dubs. No discussion, so roll call on adjournment, please. Go back to the beginning. I could be wrong. Councillor Moulton. Yes. Councillor Labarge. Yes. Councillor Dub. Yes. Councillor Rothenberg. Yes. Okay. Unanimous vote to adjourn at 637. Thanks very much for your attention for the last uh, hour and a half. Thank, Thank you. you.